Yes. Sound is tested. It looks like we're ready to go. Awesome. Um, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Alberta, Canada, but he's going to tell you more about that himself. Uh, actually, this is where I get to make all the speakers nervous. I was scrolling through <laughs> your Twitter feed. Oh, yeah? Because it's not up to me to blow his story and tell you what he's going to tell you. So I looked through your Twitter feed and online profiles, and I think I'm looking for something that I could share that would be great for the audience. Oh, yeah? And he, you can imagine, he's sat there going, oh, my God, <laughs> what did I say? Do you, have you any idea what you might have said on Twitter that I would use right now? No, mm. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, what you need to know is this guy just spent 72 hours on a bus about a week ago, right? Yes, that'd be correct. In Vancouver or heading to Vancouver. I couldn't pick that out of Twitter. Oh, it was going from Vancouver, uh, BC, to Colorado. Vancouver to Colorado. And if you've never done that journey, it's a beautiful part of the world, I can tell you. But I don't think he saw much of it because he was sat on a bus with a team of people trying to create a business in 72 hours. It's called the startup bus. I don't know if that's part of your story or not. I'm, I'm kind of hoping it's you know, a little bit at the end, maybe. For sure. Um, but this is an interactive session. And what I mean is it's not your job to just sit there and lay back and go, oh, yeah, that's really inspiring. It's your job to get involved. And that starts right now. I know you're a small group. How many of you are from the Netherlands? All right. This is what we call Klein Mar Fein. Small but perfectly formed. And it's your job to make all of those people over there, have a look at them, all over there, look back at you and go, oh, my God, something amazing is happening over there. I should probably be there. And the way you do that is by clapping, whistling, cheering, yelling, screaming, whatever you want. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would love a huge campus party round of applause for your speaker of today. Here he is, all the way from Alberta, Canada. It is, by the way, did I tell you that my last name is Stevens? No, actually We're you didn't. We're both Stevens. That's great. It's oh cool, right? Yeah. All the way from Alberta, Canada. And remember, you guys got to be loud. It is Jackson Stevens! So how are you guys enjoying campus party so far? That's awesome. So today I want to talk about a bit about my story, what I'm working on, and student entrepreneurship as well. Uh, so I'll get started. So who am I? Um, I'm a developer. I am also a designer, and I love creating change and uh, you know really making an impact in this world. And I think there's something we can all do, you know, that positively will, will create change. Um, so I'm 18 years old uh, from Alberta, Canada. I travel quite a bit as well. I just yeah, I talk. I bought, got back from Starter Bus uh, the other week. So that was really really good experience as well. Um, and I've self-taught myself. I have never taken uh, you know a, a, on a course. I've done everything online and really tried to learn from that YouTube videos and Udacity with programming and uh, everything about that as well. So what exactly is entrepreneurship? So entrepreneurship. Uh, is, is a very wide topic, uh, very, very wide topic in, indeed. Um, so if you have an idea and you really want to um, create change, um, you can, you know, if, if you're every day, uh, every day in your routine, say you're on the bus going to work and you see this problem, um, you see a great problem, and you, go, you can go ahead and think of that. What, what will solve that problem? What can I do to actually make an impact? So great ideas solve great problems. If you have an idea that you know and uh, you experience every day, uh, like a problem that you have in this world, um, you can go in, out and find a way to solve that. And that's what entrepreneurship kind of starts with. You, you get an idea and you work that idea and then you create it into something big or something that's even in your community, smaller, a nonprofit or whatever. So you can launch a startup. So by launching a startup, you will create a community around you as well. Uh, and you, you don't have to be uh, you know, a designer. You don't have to be a programmer. You just have to have an idea. Have an idea that you're passionate about enough to create that startup, to actually you know, work on that and be dedicated to that. And you need dedication to succeed because dedication is, is everything. If you even have an idea and you have a full-time job as well, you can go out and still work on that, you know, after you get back for a couple hours a day. Uh, at least work on it every day because, um, you know, entrepreneurship is all about dedication and passionate about what you're working on. So, again, be passionate about your idea. Absolutely love it and absolutely, you know, um, go out there and be able to make an impact. 
And you can do this even by talking to strangers on the street, or you can go um, to your, uh, if you're in school, you can go talk to your school friends. And there's so many ways to, uh, you know, be validated, validate that idea and be passionate about it and get feedback on if it's going to actually solve that problem. So put that idea into action. So when you have the idea you, um, and you really want to work on it and you have a team, you have, you've started to work on your startup, uh, put your idea into action. So go out into the real world. Again, ask you know, strangers or people you know online and really, you know, really just yeah, put it into action and really kind of get validated. So you can do this by even just post it on social media and be like, hey, this is my idea. I have a website. Go check it out. And people will respond to that idea. People will be like, if they have that problem as well, they can relate to it on a personal level. So this is a pretty big number. 30,000 to 70,000 thoughts are, is an estimate of how much we think of every day and how much thoughts we have every day in our mind. But when you think about that, how many of those thoughts do you actually put to action? Because there's some of those thoughts that you, you have a problem. And uh, you're, you say you're in a coffee shop and you notice there's a problem with the service or a, you know, something's an inconsistent. And you think, what can I do to make this better? So we have so many thoughts every day in our mind. Uh, what can we do to actually you know, validate those? What can we do to create a startup and build it around this problem? Every step you take and every path you follow and every moment you miss um, will change your life. Um, so a big thing that I live by is um, live life to the fullest every single day and take every possible chance you get. If you do this and you take every chance that you want to do that is offered to you, you will grow very fast and you will be able to succeed like you never knew before because every chance you get, um, a lot of people just they, they straight up deny those. They say, I have this opportunity, it's either too much money, or this is not gonna work, or it's too far away, or whatnot. You actually gotta be willing to go out there and you know, see if this is gonna work. You see if you know, this, I, whatever, um, you, whatever this is, go out and do it. So that's why I did Startup Bus last week. Startup Bus was a great, amazing experience, and I decided like the last day that I was gonna go because I was debating, is this gonna actually be worth the experience? But I decided that it was. And in that experience, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about uh, the current startup I was working on and what you can do in three days to really launch your startup. So there are a lot of thinkers out there, but not a lot of doers. There are people that th think of problems every day and that have problems every day, uh, but they don't actually do anything about it. They go out and um, they, they think about these ideas. They might even write them down and get to that stage, but they don't do anything about it. That's the difference. That's the fine line between launching a startup and uh, failing at launching that startup. You need to be actually willing to go out and do whatever that is that you're working on. You can't just write it down. You can't just say, I'm going to get to this later after I get home from work or after I do this. You need to still succeed in your own life, but you also need to be willing to take risks and take chances. And you need to do something about that. So be the person who creates change. Every day there is someone out there that is, is positively making an impact, that is doing something that you think, wow, you might see on a social media feed. You might see this thing, this nonprofit that they're doing. It's really creating a positive change. And you can be that person too. You can go out there and you can actually uh, put your idea into action, like I said before. And you can create a nonprofit or a startup that does something that even they haven't done before. So be that person who creates change. So find a problem, and when you do find that problem, solve it. Do everything I did before, and actually go out into the world, validate your idea, talk to strangers, talk to people, talk to everyone you can, and find a way to solve that. And if you do that, then you will have a very good chance and a very good shot at doing something that might really make an impact in this world. So today I want to talk about Outbully. So Outbully is a company that um, I co-founded last year in October with uh, two other co-founders. And what we do is we are a platform that allows students and uh, a facility to report incidents of bullying anonymously with a student ID to the school board or the school district. Um, so it was founded by myself, Sienna Paget, and Tristan. Um, so what we do, again, um, we want to give every student a voice. Why did we create this? 
I personally have been bullied in the past, and so has all the other, other co-founders as well. So every time we thought, and, and we have been bullied, we thought, what can we do to, to, to combat this issue, this global issue that's present in every single country and every single place on this planet? And you can't stop bullying. It's always, people are always going to have differences, and you and always going to have things that are going to come up between them. But you can find ways to combat it and reduce it, and the people who are being bullied find ways to help them out. And that's what Outbully is dedicated to. So my story starts uh, when I was um, in uh, high school. Um, I'm actually just graduating this year, but uh, anyway, it, um, I was bullied a lot, and almost every single day. It got so bad that I actually had to switch high schools because I didn't feel safe or didn't feel the motivation anymore to go back. I didn't feel like I was, you know, uh, worth it, essentially. Uh, it got so bad that my car was paintballed uh, three times in a row and uh, happened consistently over the year. And uh, a lot of other students at this high school also were bullied as well, just for differences that, you know, separated them. Maybe they were in a club where, or they were doing something that was different from everyone else. Maybe they weren't on a sports team. And uh, I know some friends uh, that have either dropped out of high school or have taken things into their own hands and um, really haven't gone back to school. Uh, and it gets worse, too. In s schools around the U.S., uh, it gets so bad that people actually take their own lives because bullying gets to the point where they can't handle it anymore, and they don't know what to do. And there's all these organizations out there that help these kids after they've been bullied, but there's nothing that does it before they've been bullied or when they're being bullied. And that's what we want to take into con uh, consideration. And that's what Outbully is designed at doing. So I'm going to show you a video shortly here. And in this video, um, I'm kind of demonstrating how the platform works, how you use the app. Also, uh, our founder, Sienna Paget, is, is talking and her story as well, how she uh, was bullied and when, what she thought of to, to do when she was being bullied. Um, so that, uh, I'm going to play right now, and please note that the background noise uh, when Sienna's speaking is uh, a little bit loud, but hopefully you can still hear clearly. And here we go. When you think of bullying, what comes to your mind? Thousands of students every day face and endure all kinds of bullying, from verbal to physical abuse, that can affect their life for the negative. There are thousands of organizations out there that aim at dealing with bullying after the fact and, and implementing steps where the student can stand up. But yet there isn't a global solution that allows students to report bullying fast and conveniently anonymously insecure until now. Outbully aims at solving that issue. We have a global vision where every student is given a voice no matter where you're from, no matter what state, what country, from every corner of the earth, we are aiming to give students a voice. To give every student a voice that is being bullied and that doesn't know what to do and how to stand up. Because there are four main types of bullying that affect the individual in different ways. These kinds of bullying consist of cyberbullying, hidden bullying, physical bullying, and even verbal bullying. Each kind of bullying has a negative impact on the victim. I want to introduce one of our founders, Sienna Paget. She has had a significant impact on Outbully and our company. And with her experience, she's taken Outbully to the next level. Hello, my name is Sienna Paget, and I am the head of PR for Outbully. As the head of PR, I send out emails and messages to different people to try and get media coverage or mentions. And I'm also the head of our ambassador program. And what that means is that I am the head of different high schoolers who are able to start clubs on their high school campuses to get out fully implemented into their schools. But we also have junior hires involved as well. And our goal is to empower other students to start their own initiatives and awareness programs to bring bullying to the front page of their issues. As over 30,000 students in school every single day, we wanted to address that issue. And we want to empower other students to address that issue. 
issue as well, as most of them are experiencing it or have witnessed it themselves. I know that nearly every single one of my classmates or schoolmates that I've talked to about bullying has either experienced it themselves or has a friend that has. So that's why we started the Ambassador Program to get other students involved and empower them to make a difference in this issue as well. So, Alpoli is a really special project to me. I'm not only passionate about it, things that I get to work on it with one of my best friends, but I also was bullied from elementary school into junior high and then even into high school. And I had a variety of different experiences from different people and individuals, and sometimes they even included my teachers. And that's why we wanted to uh, make Outbully and then make it possible to report directly to faculty that could respond to the issues immediately. I had long-term bullying issues, and luckily I had a really nice teacher and loving parents who were able to help and support me through that time. They were able to address the issue and resolve the matter. But moving forward, I didn't always have that great teacher that was able to address the issue. Sometimes I was in junior high and had multiple teachers for different periods, and the bully was able to get away with different activities. Uh, I think a memory that sticks into my mind was in junior high, I saw a boy get pushed down by these other students, and he dropped all of his books, and the other boys laughed at him and pointed their fingers, and you could tell that there was something a little bit different about this kid that got pushed down, but nothing that warranted such behavior. And as I was walking past, and the rest of the students as we were going to class, I contemplated in my mind, what do I do? I'm a witness now. Am I going to be a bystander and just not say anything? Can I even say anything? I don't even know who it is. And so what I ended up doing was I went and spoke to a teacher about what I had seen, but because I didn't know who the kid was, the issue couldn't be addressed. Yet, if I had an application like Outbully and was able to instantly report it, then a teacher or student or a counselor that was nearby could have come and immediately addressed the issue. If not addressed the bully, could at least address the kid that was pushed down and try and help him out. point for me because I it made me realize that the person who witnessed the bullying experience is just as important if not more so sometimes than the person who's being bullied because the person who's being bullied they don't feel empowered they don't feel strong enough to be able to stand up to them or to go and report it or talk about it with someone that can be trusted as an adult or as a faculty member but someone who's standing by and watching such an instance they are now empowered with an application to be able to report it and it can hopefully be addressed instantly by someone that works at the school and and sometimes there's issues even with the faculty endorsing such behavior but uh, Alpoli is fighting against such occurrences um, and perpetration by students and faculty alike at times. So now that we've built this application to address such a serious issue that affects so many students, we're looking to be implemented into the school system this fall and we're going to be launching into schools not only in the U.S. but in Canada and in the Netherlands as well. And we're excited for this process and we're excited to empower other students through our ambassador program. And if you're interested in becoming involved, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we are always looking to partner with other students and adults and, and anyone who's really interested or passionate about this issue. Um, but thank you so much for having me and it's been wonderful speaking with you and I wish you um, the best of the rest of your time. Cyberbullying happens to thousands of students and people every day, and sometimes don't even know it. On Facebook all the time, or on social media, people who are experienced bullying may receive a message from their friend, and that friend really isn't their friend. Someone else is on their account. And people lose friendships from this all the time because people's accounts get jeopardized and then other people who want to bully that specific individual jump on and hurt that and almost end that friendship but it doesn't just consist of that cyberbully may be on anonymous networks on anonymous forums or even apps and cyberbullying may be even on you know your school school's network because even though everyone tries to combat cyberbullying, 
it's not that easy. You got texts, you got messages, you got all these different types of social media, but each type of social media, each platform, each network has different rules and regulations, and you can't always combat it. That bully, we want to change that. We don't want these types of bullying to be present in any school, globally, and worldwide. We want bullying to be reduced and stopped in schools everywhere. Because every student has something wrong. Every person has a goal that they want to get to. And we don't want to take that away from them. No one should take that away from them. That's why Elbow was created. So that students can go back to doing what they love. And to doing what they're passionate about. And to go back to being themselves. And that's Elbow. So that. Thank you. So that's just a quick video we put together for this conference. But um, yeah, we really tried to a a highlight the aspect that uh, it can affect almost anyone. And you can be even a teacher, and you can be a student. And teachers get bullied every day, too. So these are some places we've been featured and mentioned by. So Startup World was a big one. They helped uh, you know, get a lot of momentum to your platform. They featured us on their uh, blog. Uh, Trouble with Post is another one they featured us on as well. You can find these articles online. Uh, Pink Shirt Day Canada actually um, uh, added us on their resources list on their website for places that uh, can combat bullying and really you know, help to, to solve it before it even happens. Um, and the Bully Project was uh, another one that also helped us out as well. They featured us on social media, and they're even interested in um, you know, creating something together and, and working on a future project together that might scale to, uh, to people in every country. So here, what is the, here's the Opoly platform. So the Upward platform, uh, we have a desire to get schools on board. So that is our main uh, thing we're working on every day. And from the very beginning, we've worked on getting schools on board when we launched in October. Well, when we started in October. Because uh, uh, you, you have to, uh, when you create an idea and you value the idea, uh, before you even have anything developed, you know, go out and, um, and try and actually figure out, well, who would use your app and who would use your service? So that's what we did. We got lots of schools on board, uh, you know, right from the beginning. Uh, we're trying to give every student a voice to stand up. And there are so many students who are being bullied that they could actually go and report it to the main office or report it to someone, tell someone, but they don't. And that is why they feel like their privacy is jeopardized. They feel as though uh, they're going to get in more trouble or it's going to escalate. And they also feel like um, it's just they, they're worried, yeah, it's going to escalate. So in the, our third uh, main goal here is to just generally reduce bullying. And even though it's hard to stop it at like 100%, we're trying to reduce it and give every student that voice to stand up. So our mission is uh, be together, not alone. So every student deserves that voice, deserves that voice to, to stand up and really you know, have a successful education, a successful time in high school, college, secondary education, wherever they are. Um, you know, and there also another statement is uh, be yourself every day and stand up because these individuals, no matter who they are, no matter where they're from, no matter what they're doing, um, some of them, they feel like they can't be themselves and we want to make sure that they can. So we all together can change education for the better and there are lots of other startups, a lot of other ideas that are working to solve this problem and to actually change education for the better. So um, there are startups that are, you know, giving students the power uh, and, and equipment to use um, t you know, computers in third world countries where they haven't been before and Facebook is a big one for doing that. But as a together, as a group, we can all find ways to uh, find solutions for education. So some types of, uh, of bullying, these are the, the most common types of bullying. Uh, the first one is, of course, cyberbullying. And this is the one that's been growing and it's been escalating uh, the most in recent years. And every, every time uh, you know, a, a new student gets a phone or a device or uh, a, you know, internet connection, uh, they have that power to, to do whatever they want with that. And a lot of people take the wrong choice and they actually they either abuse the privilege of you know, um, trying to you know, connect with people and they can cyber bully their friends or someone they don't even know or someone who goes to the school that they have never even talked to before but they can still go online and they can still go and cyber bully that person. 
and friendships are jeopardized by this. I had a friend who actually went on a Facebook account um, of a someone else's, and uh, they messaged uh, one of that br their person's friends and said a whole bunch of negative things and a whole bunch of stuff about that person, and they ended up not being friends and, and uh, because they couldn't verify and validate that it actually was another person on that network. So that's the problem. Um, so hidden bullying is another one when certain groups to get together and they, you know, they attack a certain individual it just for being different. Uh, but it's not direct. It's more on the sidelines. You got you know, all these different groups forming and all these different um, you know, niches forming. And people get picked on all the time because of this. Um, it happens in schools all over the place. And the, you know, the individual who is being bullied might not even think it is bullying, but it is affecting them. Physical bullying also has been present for a long time. It's one of the most, uh, most identified forms of bullying. And physical bullying affects the individual in the long term because if they get injured, uh, they, uh, they might end up on their sports team or they're doing something with their lives and they get physically injured, it can jeopardize what they do after that. And physical bullying has had a major impact on students uh, every day. Uh, a, a person in the U.S. Uh, gets physically bullied, and uh, that can major impact them in their life. Uh, verbal bullying is another one where students, you know, if you're even just walking past them, and then they, they comment on you negatively, they just sideline you. Um, they, verbal bullying happens in classrooms all the time, and some people just think it's jokes. Some people think, oh, this person, they can take a joke, they can, you know, but it, it's not just that, because that person that you, you know, you're talking to negatively might have an experience at home that might, um, it, it might, when a person says it, it might set them off. If their, their home situation is not, you know, quip, equipped or good enough, and then they get verbal bullied on top of that, it can really make them do things that, you know, they ha might have never done before. So 80% of students in high school and, uh, and college uh, in the U.S. Uh, have been bullied at least once or have seen someone uh, be bullied in their lifetime um, at school. And that's a pretty big number when you think of how many students uh, in there are and, uh, in, in the U.S. Um, and, and that 80% have seen someone or have been bullied themselves. It's a big number. And we're trying to find ways to really, you know, uh, just, you know, stop that. Stop in the first place and re report those incidents so that they have that voice and they're able to, to stand up. So types of bullying again uh, are the cyberbullying, the hidden bullying, uh, physical bullying, and um, also, you know, verbal bullying. Those are the four main types that are most identified. So here's our design. So when we designed our platform and our application, we really thought we wanted to make it uh, simple, engaging, and you know, friendly and, and elegant as well. We want to keep it simple so that the user can go on and uh, report those incidents. We also wanted to make it um, you know, a really good design too so that it would attract users to use the platform. So these are just some screenshots of what the iOS app currently uh, looks like. You've got the rep when you submit a report, the login with your email or phone, um, and they can log in with their email or phone. There's no other account. It's all that does is just verify that they're a real human being, and they actually um, you know, can log in. And then there's, there's just the report. That's what it looks like when you report it. Um, so with six simple steps, uh, steps, you can uh, go on the iOS app or Android app as well, which is launching in the fall, and report incidents of bullying uh, to your school or school district, depending on the region. Here's the iOS app, what it looks like. So uh, here's the home page. So that when the student first launches the app, they will see this. They're able to log in with their phone number um, or their uh, email. And uh, that phone number can be from any country. Uh, right now, then, uh, they verify it, verify their uh, you know, identity with that information, and they sign up. And the account, uh, the when they actually, you know, you know, verify it, they're sent to this page where they can launch openly or reset their ID if they need to, uh, or if they sign it on a different device, they can reset the whole, uh, their whole platform, um, their whole, sorry, whole whole experience, so that um, they won't uh, have, you know, another student can't report it from that device. Um, so the dashboard, when they log in on the iOS app, they're able to swipe and see different card views. Um, so this is what the um, dashboard looks like. So you got report. Uh, then if you swipe uh, right, you're able to see, you know, there's an emergency one, there's a help one, uh, your settings and, and whatnot. Uh, we also have a inspire me button. So in case they just want some quotes, they just want something to, you know, be inspired by, they click that and they get some uh, generated quotes that will help them maybe get by uh, even before they, they are submit their report. And they can go back to my account as well. Uh, this is what the 
setup looks like. So if you, uh, when you set up, you select your country. Uh, so right now, we're currently uh, working on adding the United States and Canada, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom. Um, and then we're going to add lots more countries later. These are the four main ones we're currently working on launching within the fall. And then when they report that, it will just say your, your submit, your, your report has been sent, and then they can um, go in and, uh, and view that report that has been sent and either cancel it or get feedback. And if the school wants to contact or the school board wants to contact that individual back, they can go and do so. And uh, they'll get a notification, a uh, push notification on the device, and they're able to um, respond to that, the student. So the Upoli dashboard for the admin and the school districts, um, we really want to get also a really good experience for them as well. Um, so this is what this looks like. So when you create an account with, um, with uh, Upoli and your uh, school district or a school board, you can go in and just enter the, your simple information here. So you enter your first name, uh, your phone number, uh, your school name, and also uh, the school size, uh, pop, like how many people are present in that school, state, province, uh, the country, and the principal admin um, contact information as well. Um, that's what the registration page looks like. So when you log in, uh, you're able to log in with that uh, when you've been verified as a school who is participating now fully log in with your ID, username, and um, also your password as well. And then this is what it looks like when you actually log into that platform. Um, so when you log into Elpoli, uh, you're able to see the students that have submitted reports, what grade they're in, and also you'll be able to see um, if it's urgent report, if it needs to get feedback right away, and also um, you know, uh, you know uh, what uh, other aspects if that the person that submits, like the location and like other things as well. Um, so th what we're also doing is we're launching the Elpoli Ambassador Program, and what their Ambassador Program does. It empowers schools, uh, students, uh, all together. So the ambassador program wants to get students who are dedicated to, uh, you know, solving and reducing bullying in the school, and try and create program programs like Outbully or actually uh, implement Outbully itself in that school to reduce bullying. Um, so right now, you can actually, um, if you're a student and you're in a school and you want your school to participate or create a program that really combats bullying, you can go online and actually create that today. And then we will help you, you know, guide you with the steps you need to succeed uh, in implementing those in your school, college, university, and, and, and whatnot. You can sign up at openly.com students if you're interested in adding your school and you are a student as well. Uh, it's available to anyone, anywhere. Um, uh, we're trying to, even though we're launching in four countries um, in the September, we're still also uh, want to work with countries globally and really trying to get this implemented as, as many places as possible. Uh, eventually worldwide is our definitely what we're trying to do. So Alpoli has been in production since um, October. As a team and as a dedicated team, uh, there uh, we've We've all experienced, you know, issues and problems along the way, but we're really excited that we're launching it soon and, and in September. Um, so, Alpoli has been in development, and everyone on the team has, you know, done things that they have never done before. I know uh, our marketer, Sienna, has learned how to program a bit as well, and really, we try to create this team that uh, wants to learn new things and not only stay in their, uh, you know, their degree of what they're focused on or what they know, and also, um, you know, help contribute if they can as well. So, we're launching in September of 2016. Again, the launch countries are in, oh, go back, Netherlands, of course, because there is a, I've talked to a lot of students here um, already, and also have friends here who have been bullied to a degree where they don't feel safe anymore, they don't feel like they can go back to school, or they're even thinking of dropping out, essentially. So the Netherlands has been a big target country from the very beginning. We thought of, um, you know, the, how schools teach each other here, or, and teach students, and uh, it, even though it's present globally, there has been a lot of outreach to myself and the Elpoli team from the Netherlands, from students here, who feel like they need something, a platform that really helps combat that, uh, that bullying here. The United States is also a big one too. Uh, there are so many students every day that have been bullied or know someone who's been bullied either physically, verbally, um, online as cyberbullying or um, you know, hidden bullying as well. And 
It happens uh, thousands of students every day, and, the, and it happens to actually 160,000 plus students every day, and that is a big number. So we're trying to reduce that and really trying to bring it down to as small a number as we can. Canada also we're launching as well. It has a similar uh, education system, so we believe that United States and Canada um, uh, can, you know, uh, work well for Upley and really uh, help, you know, bring us to the next level, uh, bring us to a level where we're able to scale effectively. Uh, so with these countries, we're essentially trying to see how it's going to work. We're testing out the platform and we're trying to um, see what the students um, report and what the school does about that. And if it's working and if it's not working, and if it's not working, what we can do to actually change that, what we can do to actually, you know, find ways and find better ways to combat bullying. Because right now we have the app and the platform, but we also want to create solutions uh, in, in the future that um, help it even um, scale more and help people uh, who are outside of school, who are, uh, have domestic home abuse, you know, report those incidents as well, because that's also a big number that is not addressed um, as well as foster students as well a lot of them have had very rough experiences so we want to figure out a way to you know s help those students as well uh, so again these three countries eventually we want to launch in the uh, the worldwide um, as many countries as we possibly can um, when we have these when we have the, the data and the statistics to figure out is it scalable is it going to work in uh, these three countries which are the United States Canada and Netherlands so these are our founders uh, so myself um, I am a developer and designer I do a lot of the front-end work and I also uh, develop a lot of the back end as well um, so Together, I'm working with Tristan uh, Willie, which is um, the ba main backend developer for Alpoli. And uh, I'm from uh, Cal Calgary, Alberta originally. Uh, however, I'm moving to Vancouver within a few weeks. Uh, so Sienna is a marketer, and um, she uh, does a lot of work with uh, Alpoli. She contacts schools and uh, contacts organizations that can really help and uh, grow Alpoli to the next level. So she does business operations as well. She's responsible for uh, you know, filing our company as a C-Corp um, and also registering uh, all our new products that we release as well. Uh, she's really been dedicated to day one and actually I met her at an uh, accelerator program called Lean Gap last summer and uh, what she was working on then really inspired me and we got together when we figured out um, what we know we can create together to create a solution and that's how I met Sienna. So Tristan is our other developer. He's also operations, and he does uh, like the majority of the back end for Outbully. He's able to um, create a great experience, uh, and uh, he works on this every day. And every one of the co-founders works on this as much time as they can, but he has been dedicated. He has been spending hours and hours of time. He estimated that uh, since uh, January, he spent over uh, 150 hours on Outbully, which is great because he's also a full-time high, high school student. So he's able to really, he's dedicated to this and really helped us uh, succeed. Um, so we're advertising campaigns, we're working on creating a simple, effective um, designs that really target uh, students and help them, you know, learn about what Outbully is and, and, and faculty as well. Um, so this is just one of our advertisements. So currently with Outbully, um, we have a website, you can go to outbully.com, sign up to be on our beta list uh, when we launch our public beta this summer, and then uh, eventually when we launch globe, uh, in, in the three countries in the fall. Um, so you're able to sign up, you'll add it to the list and get those notifications when we launch as well. Uh, you can sign up at outbully.com. Um, so with Outbully, it's not just this one solution. We're trying to create a platform and, and these solutions that can scale and effectively impact every student that has been bullied is being bullied or know someone that is being bullied um, every you know in the high school in college in university and beyond and eventually yeah, like you said want to uh, you know impact those students who are outside of that system already who have maybe they're gotten their first job or foster care student um, and they don't know where to go now and we're trying to create a solution and, and work with those students as well um, so I want to thank everyone for attending this um, speech. I also want to thank uh, Campus Party for allowing me to speak. It was a really nice invite I got from them. And also all the sponsors that sponsors this great event. Um, and uh, with Opoli, um, again, uh, trying to combat bullying as much as we can. And uh, by partnering with these other 
uh, startups we have in the past, uh, like, like um, the Bully Project. Uh, we believe that we can make a positive impact in schools around the world and really um, find ways to solve that. Uh, I also want to ask if anyone here has any questions regarding the platform or anything you, you want to comment on or issues that have been present uh, you know, that you're thinking about, uh, you, you want to ask me as well. So go ahead. Hey, Jackson, I got a question. Yes. Or more, maybe a suggestion. Okay. Just breathe <laughs> for one moment. Take a deep breath. Holy cow, was that a lot of information, right? What a great story. Wow. With so much information, I find it impossible that there are no questions in the audience, but I have a feeling they might take a second to just warm up and think yeah. about, wow. Sounds good. What was the question I had? We got one right at the back, so I'll, uh, I'll take a walk over there. You can stay on the stage. You're the hero, not me, so. Hey there, sir. How's your campus party experience so far? Tressa, I have like two questions. First of all, how, how is it working with all the people from different areas? Oh yeah. And the second question was that um, there was like last year was also like an internet bullying um, um, kind of platform, and then 4chan completely spanned it, and it just really uh, kind of went away. So how are you guys gonna um, kind of prevent that that people that are against kind of social justice stuff are gonna spam you, spam? Okay, so you're essentially asking um, what uh, people who are against, you know, social justice, um, what they, if we're trying to target them, how tar to target them essentially, or why they would use our platform? Well, I think the question was how are you going to protect yourself if, if somebody out there wants to sh get you shut down? Okay. So right now we are um, in the process of uh, working uh, with a few other bigger startups um, like the, the Bully Project and uh, we're trying to partner with them to establish an agreement where uh, we're protected, uh, the, our name is protected as well, but also get support from lawyers, legal um, um, uh, as well. And uh, you know, uh, there are definitely a lot of concerns regarding uh, anonymous and that's why we're not 100% anonymous. We're still using the student ID number um, when they, they they sign up, so it can be tracked back to the person if uh, there was a major concern that arose and whatnot. So without bully, there's definitely um, things we're working on, def uh, working around, and um, uh, you would try to make it as um, so that s students from around will actually use it and not be afraid to use it as well. So. so Jackson, I, I think you might have hit the point right there that, that might answer the question. That is, you, you, you as the general public can't just get access to spam it and, and head it. You have to have that student ID to be able to get in. Yes. And so that's enough of a, a sort of like a, um, a bump in the road to, to uh, keep the bad people out and, and hopefully keep the service nice and clean. Was that a question? Was that the answer to your question? You had a second question as well. What was it? Oh yeah, and uh, the, the first question was how is it working with all these other organizations? Um, so right now um, uh, we've been uh, featured by some places, but uh, the Bully Project has really expressed some interest in um, uh, working with us and other uh, places as well. And uh, we, we want to eventually, uh, you know, uh, we're open to different partnerships, but we also want, you know, to ke still keep our name and out Bully and everything as well. Uh, we think that we can get a lot of momentum from these different places, they already have a big list of schools that have either partnered with them or have, um, or have details about those. Uh, and so we think a partnership agreement eventually would be, uh, would be the best option for us to move forward. Um, also, I'd never talked about the subscription service, uh, what Elpoli is. So Elpoli, we're charging a minimal fee to for schools to actually use the platform. Um, that's our kind of how our business model is, is B2B and then also B2C uh, business to consumers uh, with the app. Uh, they're not charged, there's no advertisements, uh, we're a nonprofit. So all we're doing is really, you know, getting that um, income from the, uh, the fees we charge, the subscription for the schools. So early days on the partnership, still building them. Yes. Fabulous. Another question perhaps. Yeah, I'll come down. What's your name? What's your question? So, um, my name is Jean. Um, I think it was a great presentation and it's really a good thing to do something with uh, bullying, with a uh, big issue in the schools. So, my question was, what happens uh, with the bulliers once uh, the bullying was reported to the school? So, why can the 
What a great question. What happens to the bullies after they've been reported? That is a great question. And uh, so right now, when the school signs up for OutBully, uh, they're given a few options of you know how they want to resolve this issue. Uh, we're not trying to get the bullies in any trouble. We're just trying to find what is going on, and that is so. Every school has their own decision of you know what what they want to do with those reports if they want to act on it or not. Uh, we're not responsible for for actually doing that, but um, we're, we are going to give the schools you know suggestions. So without bully, um, you know sometimes the bully has either had a rough time at home or there have been they have been bullied themselves in the past. So we want to see you know what happened to that student. Why did they bully this other person to an extent where they were they wanted to report it and figure out on both sides um, you know what they can do about this issue. Um, and what out bully is is just trying to essentially you know if you're a witness or a standby. Um, you're able to report those um, incidents fast and, and secure right th then and right now, so they're able to get that instant feedback um, you know, as soon as they can. Yeah, one more question. Um, it's maybe more an, an opinion. Um, we don't have space for opinions. We have space for questions. Oh, it's okay. I mean, opinion sounds good. Uh, yeah. um, I think the people who witness bullying um, are important in this process of bullying because the bully and the bullier, there are two people are in a bad situation, I think, socially. Mm -hmm. But the witnesses, they should do something. And I think it's something you should maybe work on, on yeah. maybe an ID, if you know what I mean. I definitely know what you mean. Yeah. The witness, actually, like Sienna was talking about in the video, uh, has a lot of power. And uh, sometimes they don't think they do. Um, so the, the witness can actually submit a report. Um, when we're launching as well in the fall. Uh, for the person who's being bullied, they don't have to be bullied themselves, they just have to describe who was being bullied, what happened, and the situation. And we're working to work, uh, we're looking to work and, and closely and do more studies of, you know, how these Im witnesses will have an impact, because there are a lot of witnesses that are just standbyers right now and aren't doing anything about it. So we're trying to empower them to do, do, do something about it. Great answer. I got another question right here behind me. What's your name, what's your uh, question? Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Menno, uh, and I was really triggered about uh, about the story of Berlin because I'm bullied, uh, being bullied uh, a lot uh, in uh, on uh, in primary school. Mm -hmm. uh, who's your partner in Holland to to do business with? Um, so right now we're working with a few individuals. Uh, I can't release their names yet, but I have um, met some uh, a student who is. Uh, has been bullied excessively in the past. They just graduated, and uh, they, uh, I guess I can even tell his first name, Mike. Um, so he really wants to partner with us. Um, he lives in Amsterdam, and he's uh, experienced bullying, like he said, a lot in the past. Um, so he has a good network of connections that he is able to try and get some of his schools on he, board. He's already got his school on board as well. So we think that. Um, we're able to uh, expand our reach and really try and get more people here involved and really trying to you know, grow Outbully in the Netherlands because there aren't too many contacts we have yet, but we have a few that we're working with. We can talk about it. Sorry, what? I uh, So we can talk about it. I, w I, w I would like to help For you sure, to, I would love to, uh, to, to make a bigger, uh, bigger for sure, of, I of, uh, connections. So. For sure, I would love to uh, love to work with you. I'll actually give me a card after. I was going to say, great. Maybe you guys can hang around right at the end and uh, and connect, and that's uh, going to make campus party worthwhile, right? I mean, that that's what we're all here for. Maybe time for one more question. Yeah. You look like you were uh, no, no, just turning around to see us. Yeah, on the front row. Same rules. What's your name and what's your question? Well, my name is Joy, and I was uh, I have a question about are you giving uh, students or the teachers a workshop on how they can prevent bullying or how they can solve it? Exactly. So one thing I never really went into is how what the application process for the schools really is. So when a school signs up to be part of the Outbully, um, or uh, what we do, uh, they can sign up, but when they sign up, we're sent a notification saying this school wants to be involved. They then go through a review process um, of um, what they want to combat and um, how, how they can do that. So then uh, we're working on an online tutorial system where the schools um, can go watch these videos and uh, you know we suggest different things of what might work for them what might not work for them because we can't be there at every single school to kind of uh, you know 
guide them, but we still want to give them as much uh, opportunity as they, we can. So that's the answer to that. Question, why can't you be at every school to guide them? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. It's uh, it, it would be pretty tough to be at every school to, to guide them. We're, well, that's why we're establishing the, the ambassador program. So say um, we, we create these online tutorials, but the school you know, still wants more feedback. They still want more help. Uh, and the, there's always a situation has arise with the Outbuilding Ambassador Program. If there's a school in that area or that district or, uh, or that country that can go there and actually you know, help them in person, that's what we're doing. And those students who are part of the Ambassador Program will receive um, uh, compensation not in terms of money, but in terms of volunteer experience um, that are able to put towards yeah, volunteer experience as well. Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like that, that is a potential for a business model. If you've got a school saying, hey, you guys are the experts in this. You've got data from all around the world, lots of different schools, lots of different bullies, lots of different experts. Will you come in and please show us how we could uh, think about it differently? What could we do? There is no question that they would pay you for that value. So, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, time for one last question. Otherwise, we... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to yeah, I knew there would be one more. I could <laughs> I could see it in your eyes. Hi. I think you're you're Alex, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Alex, what's your question? Um just a, on a more personal level. So I heard that you you graduated this year? Yes, sorry, what? And, uh, you are you graduating? Oh, yes, this graduate. Year? Yes. So just wondering if you're planning on working full time then on your app or do you want to go to college or That's a very good question. So uh, I'm keeping my options open, but I'm really dedicated to this startup. I'm really dedicated to Outbully. I think everyone on the team is, and I definitely want to you know, uh, go to university because I think it's uh, worthwhile to, to get that experience. But uh, I still want to work, even if I do go to university, still work on it as much as I can because even though we're launching in the fall, uh, we'll, see how that, we'll see how that goes, but we still um, you know, want to work on it afterwards and, and uh, you know, grow this as much as we can if it's, if it's going to go somewhere. Uh, so I definitely dedicate like, really to working on this full time because I believe it's there's no other um, solution out there as of now that really can uh, you know help those students stand up. So I really want to because I've been personally bullied, and if there's an app like this when I was being bullied, I would have used it uh, like a lot. So I, I guess I want. I'm really dedicated to it. Isn't it awesome to see that much passion in somebody so young and talented? Cool. Thanks. Thanks. So Alex just asked me a question. She's like, "How the hell do you know my name? Because <laughs> we've never met, right?" And she's looking at me like. That's kind of creepy. You do realize you're wearing a big badge that's got your name on it, right? <laughs> Sorry. Conference 101, there is so much information around, you can always use it. Um, Jackson, where, yes. when are you heading home? Oh, I'm leaving this uh, Monday, actually. Ah, so you get to spend a little bit of time here in the Netherlands. Where are you hanging out? Amsterdam, Utrecht? Yeah, I want to I want to explore more of Utrecht, and uh, then also go to Amsterdam as well. Uh, it, both, I've been here for a very short time, but I really like you know the environment and the cool. people here. So, wanna. all right. Well, it's not a campus party experience if you don't sleep in a tent. So oh, yeah? we're actually going to give you your own campus party tent. Oh, really? Oh, you thank you. You can take that with you. Uh, it's perfectly safe to take on a plane, so you should be able to get it all the way back to uh, Canada, no problem. Okay. And uh, uh, well, I'm sure you're in a hotel room, but they won't mind you pitching it that's and uh, sleeping in it for That's night. awesome. We'll Ladies and gentlemen, that. please, oh, a awesome. warm, huge round of applause for Jackson. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Also, I have a few T-shirts here. Uh, I have two, actually, who I would like to give out um, to a few p individuals and a few posters as well, if you're interested, and right. some stickers in case. Uh, are you maybe going to hang around for a little bit more Q&A if somebody yes. maybe is a little bit too shy? I would love to. All right, so maybe you want to hang around just at the back of the stage, and sure. uh, then you can do your T-shirts, Q&A, business cards, the Sounds whole good. lot. Thank you so much awesome. you know, for you know, helping me. This no, no amazing. worries. And uh, come swing by me later. Maybe i got some contacts for you. For sure. That sounds cool. great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so anyone out there who has uh, any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, if not, I guess uh, who here, a, a population of hands, um, who wants a t-shirt, I can uh, throw them up. Okay, because I have a few here available. Uh, I guess I'll ask you maybe a question regarding my talk. Um, what was the percentage of students who uh, were bullied or have been bullied or seen someone be bullied uh, in the U.S. that I presented? I actually, I'll get the speaker thing too, or the mic. Sweet. Anyone have an answer? You? Yes. Eighty percent. Close. Very close. Eighty percent. But you still get a T-shirt for your participation. There you go. And uh, I guess I can give out one more as well. Um, 
trying to think of another question that uh, occurred. Um, Oh yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so I listed two cities in my presentation uh, in Canada. Uh, what was the city I was um, born in? Close, but that was the other city. Any? Oh, where? Yep, yep, you got it. There you go. Yes. Yes. Um, so if people want to contact us, uh, you can go to uh, our website, and uh, you can con there's a contact form that we have our email listed, phone number as well, and then um, they're also able to subscribe to be notified. So uh, if you have any questions or any uh, things you want to address and send to us, a story and whatnot, you can go and contact us through our website. Uh, is that answering any question? And I, and I also see a box of business cards. Yes, yes. There yeah, I'll give you a contact. I will. I will do that. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for your time and coming to my speech. Uh, and if you want to talk to me later, I would love to talk to anyone who's interested. Um, so that is out fully. And again, thanks for coming. <laughs>